you fake. I am Cookie Masterson, and I'm a people person. It's true, I'm actually made of millions of tiny little people. <laughs> Quiet down in there! I bet before you had this day marked on your calendars for months now. Everybody's got their screws. If you think another player is clueless, screw them and make them answer immediately. If they miss it, you win extra cash. And our wrong answer of the game is sponsored by... Hoarder Helpers! Are you a hoarder? We're here to help you hoard more stuff. Absolutely no psychiatrists on staff. If you happen to find our sponsor's wrong answer to the game, you'll be rewarded with big prizes and cash. So, let's make this happen. Get ready, time for fashion. One. Kicking things off, London Bridges falling down. In the nursery rhyme, Wee Willy Winky, what's covering up Wee Willy Winky's Wee Willy? The nightgown he's wearing, the wolf suit he's wearing, the wooden shoe he's sailing in, or nothing, he's completely nude. Time is short. It's amazing how each of you forgot how to buzz in at exactly the same time. Okay, don't be afraid, but here's a right answer. The first line of the nursery rhyme goes, Wee Willy Winky runs through the town, upstairs and downstairs, in his nightgown. He's wearing a nightgown. Presumably that's what's covering up his Wee Willy. Look, some nursery rhyme guys are showers, and some nursery rhyme guys are growers. And now, zombies never get old. What might you see in a television show called The Balking Dead? An army of zombies walking backwards, a horde of zombies walking in circles, a swarm of zombies walking on tiptoe. Want to see the right answer? If the dead are balking, that means they've stopped short or are refusing to move forward for some reason. Kind of like the plot of Walking Dead Season 2. Wow, this is a real horde of circular logic. Which is great because that means you just won this expandable hoarder house from Hoarder Helpers. Because one man's trash is another man's trash that he can store in his expandable hoarder house. You'll be happy to know this wrong answer of the game comes with $4,000. Congrats. Coming up next, I'll preheat my oven to 450 degrees when I'm dead. And we're cooking up a dis or dat. Player one, you don't smile enough. I think you ought to play this dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven items, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a type of burial plot available in a cemetery, or if it's a type of tombstone frozen pizza. If it's a type of burial plot, Press the square button. If it's a type of tombstone pizza, press the circle button. Now the rest of you should listen carefully. Lock in your answers before player one, because if player one gets it wrong, everyone who got it right will split the cash. Okay, let's move. Single. Companion. Family. That performance was dead right out of the gate. When I die, I want to be cremated, but not just in any oven, in a pizzazz pizza oven. That way every part of me is cooked evenly. Here's one I like to call, Zack and Miri make a board game. What do Seth Rogen and the game Trivial Pursuit have in common? They were both created in the 70s, they were both created by a Jewish woman, they were- Player 2, who gets the screw? Goodness, Player 1, you're screwed! You got five seconds to give me an answer. 
Seth Rogen was born in Vancouver, Canada, and Trivial Pursuit was created in Montreal, Canada. And another thing Seth Rogen and Trivial Pursuit have in common... Ah, uh, no, that's about it. Hate to break the news to you, player two. Pucker up for Kangaroo, Peanut, Albert Einstein, or Uranus? Kangaroo, Peanut, Albert Einstein, Yo. or Uranus? Steven Spielberg modeled one third of E.T. after this subject. Kangaroo, Peanut, Albert Einstein, or Uranus? <laughs> Players two and four? Sweet dreams. Players one and three? That's just nuts. Here's what you meant to pick. E.T. was an amalgamation of Ernest Hemingway, Carl Sandburg, and Albert Einstein. Yeah, he definitely has Einstein's neck. That's the end of a thrilling first round. And player one is ahead. And feeling pretty good right about now. Remember, in round two, every question is worth double. And don't forget about your screws. You want to win, don't you? Next up, I've been framed. So, I've been looking at this print of the Mona Lisa a lot lately, and people always talk about her little half-smile, but I've become obsessed with something else. What the hell is the Mona Lisa looking at? Something to her right? Something to her left? Something straight ahead? Or something behind her? Why player four? Who do you care to screw? Oh, you're screwed player one. You got five seconds. Superlative screwing player four. Why not pick up a few more bucks? Player three? The Mona Lisa is looking over to her left. Which is weird because there's nothing over there but my far side calendar. Nobody's found that interesting in years. Player four? Sorry, no take backs. Player two? Congratulations, not. Question seven! Let's try... What's black and black and black all over? If during a battle of wits with the Riddler, Batman were unable to solve the riddle of the Sphinx, what might the Riddler say to mock him? Looks like you're not as smart as Oedipus, Bat Breath. You're certainly no Anubis, Bat Brain. You're dumber than... S Players 2, 3, and 4? You got it. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Player 1. In the Greek play Oedipus the King, Oedipus is the only one capable of answering a devious riddle posed by a murderous sphinx. You know the Riddler has lost his touch when he starts asking riddles anyone could just look up on Wikipedia. Follow me down to the sea. Oh, this one's called Get Your Mind Out of the Gutter Ball. It's the put the choices into order then buzz in and see if you are right. And if you knock down a right answer here, I'll roll some extra cash your way. Put these bowling pin arrangements in order of most to fewest pins left standing. 710 split, dinner bucket, Christmas tree. Dinner bucket, Christmas tree, 710 split, Christmas tree, 710 split, dinner bucket, Christmas tree, dinner bucket, 710 split, or dinner bucket, 710 split, Christmas... Gutter ball! <laughs> Allow me. A dinner bucket is when there are four pins left standing, the two, four, five, and eight pins. A Christmas tree is three pins left standing, either the two, seven, and ten, or the three, seven, and ten. And in a seven, ten split, there are, of course, two pins left standing, the seven and ten pins. All those numbers hurt my brain. That's why I usually let the bowling computer do it for me. I also let the bowling computer do my taxes. <laughs> Open wide for... All Men Must Die. Somewhere around episode 9. If the leading cause of death in the Game of Thrones universe were the same as the leading cause of death in the modern world, what spoilerish comment would you most likely read on the internet? Hey, did you know Arya dies of mal... Oh, Player 3! Who's getting the screw job? Player 
two, you're screwed. You got five seconds to pick an answer. Player three, way to work that screw. Grab a few more bucks, why don't you? Players one, three, and four. Killing seven million people a year, heart disease is the leading cause of death worldwide. Of course, as we know, the actual leading cause of death in Game of Thrones is struggling to be a 20-something in New York. Oh, wait, that's, that's girls. I always get HBO shows mixed up. Say hello to... Melts in your pretty mouth. Based on the gender roles assigned by the Mars Company, which M&M's character could give birth to an M&M's mini? Red, yellow, blue, or green? For whatever reason, red, yellow, orange, and blue M&M's are male, and brown and green are female. It's the female ones that have nuts that confuse me. You do not want to be in the hospital room when an M&M gives birth. Sure, they melt in your mouth, not in your hands, but I'm telling you, those mini M&Ms are pretty melty when they come out of the birth canal. Welcome to the attack. When you see two clues that match, press the X button. 2,000 big ones if you're right. 2,000 gone if you're wrong. And one more thing. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Getting the beast of me. What animal are you surrounded by? Good luck. If this is all you've done with your life, then... You don't know Jack! And now, relax into Downward Dog. Ooh, what's wrong, Susan? Is this yoga class too hard? No, I had a burrito for lunch and I'm feeling gassy. Honey, this is Sweet Relief Yoga Studio. We don't hold anything back. Now, swing your foot into Warrior 2. Whoa, did she just? Uh-huh. And that's okay? Does that answer your question? Hi, I'm Carol Cutter, and here at Sweet Relief Yoga Studio, we believe letting go leads to true health. Oh. <coughs> hold on, I'm gagging. True health. True health is what I was going to say. Ugh, don't you hate going to the movies by yourself? I mean, I do. We have so much in common. I mean, 
Maybe you and I should sometime. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, whatever. I guess there aren't any good movies showing right now anyway, so never mind. Forget I said anything. That was stupid. <laughs> this message paid for by people who think you and Tina should go out on a date sometime just to see how it goes. That's so embarrassing. I did not put them up to that. Also paid for by Tina.